What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out the newest version of Artisan, the organic modeling tool set for SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Artisan is a tool set specifically designed to help you create organic models. And so the modeling tool set that's built in is designed for letting you do things like working with quads and subdividing models in order to make them smooth, as well as doing like fall off editing with vertices. So things where you move part of something and it creates kind of a smooth fall off. Um, but basically it's just a number of tools for that organic modeling application in SketchUp. So I will link to Artisan in the notes down below if you want to check it out. All right, so first off, if you're looking for some more in-depth tutorials, um, there are some detailed tutorials contained over on the Mindsight Studios YouTube channel, which I can link to in the notes down below. Um, but it's nice to actually see some documentation on um, a new add-on when things roll out that kind of show you how to use everything, especially because it's more of an in-depth extension. Okay, and so when you first open up Artisan, what you're going to see is you're going to have three different toolbars, right? And so there's a number of helpful tools in here, things like uh, Subdivide and Smooth, um, which is going to allow you to subdivide objects and make them smoother. Um, tools for subdividing meshes and uh, doing a lot of other interesting things having to do with quads. So you've also got the transform functions. These are going to be the tools that you can use in order to kind of like move things around. This is where your soft selection is going to come from. So when you pick like a vertex and then you have things kind of like moving outward, these are the tools you're going to use for that. And then you've got the sculpt tool set, which is basically a tool set for sculpting inside of SketchUp. This in general is going to work with triangulated meshes rather than quad meshes. But let's take a quick look at these and just get kind of an idea of what they can do. And then if you're interested, we can get more in depth on these in the future. Okay, and so when you're working with quads, um, the nice thing about that kind of geometry is it gives you the ability to do things like subdividing your meshes. Right? So with this mesh right here, I can use this in order to create some additional edge loops in here in order to add additional detail. Um, so again, these tools are all kind of set for that workflow. So if I want to add some more geometric detail in here like this, and let's go ahead and let's make a copy of this real quick. So maybe we'll make two copies just so you can kind of see what this is doing. But um, when I come in here, this object right now, if I subdivide it, right, is going to basically subdivide all of the edges in order to smooth it out. But with the amount of geometry we have in here, it doesn't really give us a great result. Um, however, if we start adding that additional ge geometric detail with things like the subdivision tool, right, then I take this Notice how it gives me a much smoother result. So what this does, this allows us to come in here and start making those uh, making those changes in order to get those better results. And so one of the things I like about this is we've got a tool in here for doing things like um, adding additional loops, right? And when I do that, what I can do is I can add additional detail in here just by kind of like moving my mouse over the shape. Well, remember when you do that with a quad workflow like this one, um, and then we subdivide it because we've given it those additional support loops in here, we're, we're kind of able to dictate the way that these surfaces are created um, using those different edge loops like this. And so this tool set also comes with some additional tools for doing things like extruding multiple faces as well as edges. So let's say for example that I wanted to extrude this edge like this, I can extrude this using this tool right here, right? So you're not limited to just extruding faces with this tool. You can also extrude edges out like this. But then what we can do is let's say that we wanted to subdivide this and I'm gonna make a copy of it real quick. So right now, if we subdivide the raw geometry, um, I'm not necessarily a huge fan of doing that just because what it's gonna do is it's just gonna subdivide that geometry and you're kind of like, stuck, right? Like you can keep clicking the button, but it's just going to keep subdividing it like this. However, if you were to take this geometry, put it in a group and then add subdivision, what it's going to do is it's going to give you this kind of like live subdivision in here that you can adjust, right? So you can set the edge display, you can set the number of iterations, other things like that. But then you can also come in here and you can actually edit this, right? So for example, say I wanted to add another loop in here, I could go ahead and do that. And this is gonna give me that live subdivision in here, right? So notice how it's allowing me to use the quads in order to add this additional detail like this. And so that gives us the ability to kind of click into and out of this object 
Notice how we can add or remove those iterations right here. If we decide we don't want the subsurf, we can just come back in here and remove that. So it gives you that kind of like live subdivision modeling tool set in here that you could use in order to do a bunch of different things. Um, but so we've got this uh, quad modeling tool set and we've also got the transform tool set. I'm just gonna do the same thing over here. Let's just generate a surface real quick and I'm just gonna subdivide it a few times. But if we come in here with this tool set, what this tool set does is this basically gives us like a soft selection tool set. So what that means is that means that you can come in here and you can select things like vertices, right? Either by clicking on them like this or doing like a shift click, or you could also drag a box in here in order to do this kind of selection. But what this is gonna do is this is going to allow us to set a soft select radius. And so what a soft select radius is going to do is let's say that I was to move this right here. So let's say we were to move it up along the blue axis like this. Well, notice what happens is everything that's red is getting basically this transformation applied to it, right? Wherever we clicked. But then everything outside of that in a certain radius is getting kind of a soft move selected in the sense that it doesn't get the full distance of that move applied to this object, right? So for example, let's say that I was to, whoops, let's say that I was to select a couple different areas like this. Well, notice how we can type in a value or a radius. So if I was to type in a value of like seven feet, and hit the enter key, notice what that does is that adjusts that soft select radius in here so that it gets bigger. So now if we take this, we move it, notice how all of those are going to move at once, but they're all getting that soft select applied to them at the same time. And so that's gonna apply both to the move tool, but also to things like the scale tool. So if I was to take the scale tool and scale these objects, right? Notice how it's going to do the same thing where it's gonna give you kind of a soft select movement in here. Um, so everything that's red is getting like the full scale treatment applied to it. But everything else is getting that kind of like, it's getting that kind of like fall off or reduced transformation applied to it. But then in addition, we've got some other tools in here like the flatten tool or make planar tool. What the make planar tool is going to do is it's going to take these areas right here and you could tap the up arrow key if you wanted to, but you can apply a plane to them, right? So what that did is that allowed me to basically make these areas planar. And if we wanted to, we could take that soft selection and we could set it to like two feet, right? Like this, and then go back and apply that. And what that's going to do is that's going to apply that planar, um, that planar force to this right around the top right here. And so assuming that you didn't want to do that, assuming you just wanted to select the vertices on the top here. So if I came in here and selected these, right, like this, um, what you could do is you could hit the tab key in order to toggle that soft select off like this. So when you do that, right, when you hit tab, it's only going to apply to these objects, but then you could come in here you could make them planar really in whatever direction you want, but notice how that's going to give you more of like a firm flatness in here like this. So um, you can use that in order to take these objects that you have selected and make them planar. But then you could also use that and come in here and take like a full selection like this one and you could make that planar. And in this case, we might tab and uh, turn that soft select on. But if I was to click in here and just set a plane like this, notice how it's gonna flatten it and it's also gonna bring everything around that up. Now, one thing that I would like to be able to do, and I'm not 100% sure if this is something that we do have the ability to do and I just haven't found it yet, it would be nice to be able to set like a rotation in here, like if I wanted to make this gently slope or something like that. Right now, what it's doing is it's kind of aligning with all the surfaces, right? Which is okay. Um, I could come in here and make this whole thing planar in that direction or this direction like this, but it would be nice to kind of like set a point and a rotation um, in order to have a little bit more control over this. But overall, the Make Planar tool is actually a pretty cool tool inside of SketchUp. So in addition, if you remember the tool FFD, um, which uh, we've talked about on the channel before, it was kind of a separate extension. It's kind of gotten rolled into Artisan, but if you double click in here, what FFD is going to do is it's gonna allow you to select a series of control points like this and make changes. Notice how I can use this in order to kind of deform this object a little bit. So I could also like move it over, apply like a rotation to it if I wanted to do that. So um, it just gives you the ability to kind of do this like object deformation inside of SketchUp really easily. 
So another tool that I think could be really useful inside of the subdivision tool set is the ability to extrude faces. And so what that's going to do is that's gonna let you take faces like these and extrude them. And there's a couple different modes that you can use this on. So for example, if I tap the Alt key, notice how it changes modes, but you can use this to extrude these all in a single direction like this. You can also tab the Alt key and it'll allow you to thicken those existing faces. So basically I think it's using the face normals or the direction of the faces in order to create that extrusion like this. You could also use it to extrude each individual face without it like healing between them. Right, So you can see how you can use that in order to extrude each face in a certain direction, but it's not automatically gonna fill this in. So you can use all three of those in order to get different results using your extrusions. So you've also got a tool in here that allows you to inset individual faces. So um, like in SketchUp, right, like I can use the offset tool in order to offset one face inside right like this um, but first off it doesn't maintain that quad geometry right it just kind of offsets that in a little bit but with this tool what it'll do is it'll give you the ability to offset multiple faces at a time right so i can click like this notice how if you tap that alt key it's going to give you different options right so you can offset an object like this you can offset objects based on that central or around each one of the selected faces like this. So you can use this in order to really quickly do those multiple offsets in here. If you wanted to do something like quickly insetting, then um, extruding faces up or moving faces up, other things like that. So that can be really valuable for doing those multiple offsets or insets at one time. And then finally, let's take a look at the sculpt function. So the sculpt functions are pretty good in this tool. Um, so, and again, I find myself using a subdivide tool a bunch, but um, basically what this is gonna do is you're gonna select a surface and it's gonna give you access to all of these sculpt functions, right? All these different brushes. And so if I click on this, what it's gonna do is it's gonna tell me that it needs to triangulate my mesh before we sculpt. Remember, if you triangulate your mesh, then some of these other tools like the subdivision aren't really going to work anymore because you've gone from a quad workflow to a tri workflow. But um, basically what these are gonna do is it's gonna give you a number of different brushes that you can select using this drop down right here. And so you can control things about your brush either by using these sliders here or by using keyboard shortcuts, right? So um, like the left and right bracket are going to adjust the overall radius in here. And then your strength is going to set like how far out the fall off is. Most of the strength is concentrated inside of the green area in here, but then the radius is going to give you kind of a fall off, right? So the fall off is where it's going to apply um, a transformation, but not as strong as the transformation that's going on in the middle of your object right here. So then in addition, you can also use the detail size in here to set the size of the detail that's being created when you sculpt these faces, right? So if you look at this, if I set the detail size really small, it's really kind of like splitting that surface up to a certain degree, and if I click on it again, it just kind of keeps doing that. If I set my detail size to something big, then your detail is kind of gonna stay the same, right? It's not really like dividing it in order to give it any additional detail or anything like that. And so there's a number of different tools down here that you can use in order to do different things. I don't wanna to get too in depth with these right now, but we can take a little bit more of a look of just what, um, just what some of the different brush types are going to do in here. So the sculpt brush is gonna do exactly what it sounds like. It's going to sculpt. You've also got brushes like the clay brush, which is gonna allow you to do things like adding or subtracting materials. And so you've also got brushes in here to do things like grab and pinch. So if I was to pinch, right, notice what it's doing is it's kind of like pinching the material together like this. But notice how I could also use that grab brush in order to grab and drag things out if you wanted to do that, almost like you were sculpting clay in here. All right, and then note that this tool also gives you the ability to do symmetrical modeling or sculpting. Like I've got this half a sphere right here, but if I was to select it and click on the symmetry button, what this is going to do is this is going to basically flip a copy of this like this. Well, now if I come in here and sculpt, on this object and we need to go ahead and triangulate it. But let's say that I was to come in here and start sculpting, notice how I get this, uh, this symmetrical version of this. So you're getting symmetry across this plane, 
right here. And I will be the first to say that sculpting is definitely not one of my strong suits, but um, you can see how you can use this in order to create those symmetrical objects. And then things like that grab, um, and I'm sure the horns coming off of a sphere are kind of a common example, but notice how when I create that on one side, it's going to be mirrored across that plane on the other side, allowing you to uh, really quickly create um, symmetrical objects without you having to like double up on work or anything like that. All right, and then one other function that I really like in this tool is the ability to um, do a paint select. So what I can do is I can click and drag in here in order to select a surface. And so you can either use this to like select surfaces like this, and then you could come in here once you've done that, and you could do things like, uh, like editing meshes using that soft select right here. But there's also a tool in here that's gonna allow you to paint. Now, one thing about the paint is um, you are going to want to have whatever material you need to put in here um, already in your model. But let's say, for example, that I wanted to apply a grass material We'll go ahead and we'll have a ground cover material in here as well, but you can click on this and then you can hold the alt key in order to sample a material and then you can use this to paint along your surface like this. And this could be especially valuable if you've done like sculpting in here, right? So if I was to sculpt in here and add some detail really quick, again, I'm going really fast, but let's say I was to do that, um, this is still gonna allow you to paint over this surface, right? So I can do an alt in order to select this, but notice how this is allowing me to paint along this surface really quick. So say I wanted like rocks near the top of this, but then I wanted grass down below like this. You can use that in order to paint along these different surfaces. So um, having the ability to paint inside of a 3D space can definitely be um, super valuable, um, especially when you start getting into these more like uh, detailed meshes and other things like that. All right, so that's kind of an overview of the features in Artisan 2. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about the tool, what's contained inside of it. I just love having that conversation with you guys. I will link to Artisan 2 in the notes down below if you want to check it out. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.